Today on Community Connection, we're on the seawall in West Vancouver, enjoying this beautiful sunny fall day. We've got stories from across the lower mainland, from arts to sports and everything in between. On today's show, we go to the Lynn Valley Main Library to check out these breathtaking, beautiful pieces of fiber arts. Also, Vancouver's mayor is on hand to answer questions at Moby's launch. And an award-winning jewelry designer recycles your most special pieces of jewelry. See all this and more right now on Community Connection. Hello and welcome to Community Connection, a show about people and places that makes Greater Vancouver an amazing place to live in. Hi, I'm Azzy Kujiri on the seawall in West Vancouver. But before I have the chance to speak with a West Vancouver councillor, I went to an art exhibition in the Lynn Valley Main Library, displaying works of an award-winning artist whose pieces takes your breath away. The North Vancouver Arts Council is collaborating with the Lynn Valley Library in promoting the intrinsic value of arts. So we have a partnership with the library and so this is an opportunity for emerging and professional artists to have their work displayed in more public environments. Uh, so as opposed to a gallery where you get people who are specifically either coming specifically to a gallery or who are already interested in work, this is an opportunity to interface with people who are just walking by, who are accessing a public space. They are also partnered with Maplewood House where they run a lot of their programs. So we have a partnership with Maplewood House. Our after school programs will happen in partnership with the school that they're happening with to facilitate those programs as well. Then we also do, for example, we have calls for proposals for themed exhibitions within the cityscape community art space. And then we will hold, uh, when we have a call for proposal, we'll hold an info session on how to write a successful application. So we really support the arts community in exhibition, but also in developing skills in artistic practice as well. So anywhere that we can support and build and hold up the arts community, that's where that grassroots and our mandate is. In addition, the council supports exhibitions of sculpture, glasswork, paintings, watercolour and the display of installations. Every eight weeks, the library showcases the artwork of a new artist. One of these artists was an award winner fibre artist, Jane Kenyon. This particular body of work is called Point of View because the images have come from when I've been hiking or traveling or looking at scenery or buildings and so on and sometimes you can go up really really close to a building or a rock and see something and then you can stand really far back and actually the idea came from a piece that I did that uh, that had been taken a really really small rock and the croc cracks in the rock and I made a big piece of it and then I realized that it kind of looked like outer space. It, it was just the idea that things in nature can resemble each other whether you're looking at them really close even microscopic or looking at them very very far away there's there's some connection there. I thought maybe people look at it at different angles yeah. and yeah. see how it looks so it's that as well as it's that kind as of well and I think the the beautiful thing about working in fiber especially really deep detailed fiber is they have a lot of impact far away and then they have a totally different impact when you right. get up really close to them and even as you say when you walk past and the light hits them at different angles right. they change as you move so that's definitely it's, it's from the point of view of the viewer as well as right. the artist. This kind of work particularly I call thread painting. I call it thread painting because actually I feel like they are paintings composed of thread. Mm -hmm. They're done on a sewing machine, but I'm actually moving the canvas or the material around right. so that I have total control over where the color goes and what direction it goes and so on. Jacqueline Van Dijk, the director of the library services, explained the role of the library in promoting arts. Library spaces and the role of libraries is really evolving rapidly right now. So we're no longer a place that's just about books. We're way beyond books. And we're a place where we're about connecting community 
and sharing knowledge and inspiring stories. So this whole partnership is a really natural partnership for us. Yeah, you never know what you're sparking in a young person who's really interested in art and may not have exposure in other places. And uh, it's pretty exciting for us to hear about somebody who just comes across a piece of art and then they really connect with it and they're surprised and delighted to see it in a place where you might not expect to see art. The Council is certainly doing a great job promoting the arts through these partnerships. We hope to see more of this in our future. For Community Connection, I'm Azi Kajuri. Jane Kenyon's work is no longer on display, but the library showcases the works of new artists every eight weeks. Our next story is about Gregor Robertson's plan to make Vancouver a greener city. Our reporter Stephanie Florian takes us to the launch of Moby, where the mayor was on hand to answer questions. Vancouver's long-awaited public bike share system called Moby was unveiled with Mayor Gregor Robertson on hand for the announcement. Lots of interest, lots of buzz in the city, and that's, uh, that's what we were looking forward to. So we're looking forward to continuing to make cycling safe and convenient around the city and a more affordable way to get around. Moby rolled out with 150 bikes at 23 stations, but the plans are for 1,500 bikes at 150 stations by the end of the summer. Moby is great for one-way trips. So if you're commuting to work, maybe you're in downtown and you want to go to Gastown for dinner, uh, it's a great way to kind of do those short one-way trips that are a little bit too long to walk and that you might not want to drive or take the bus for. The incentive really is to ride for less than half an hour on these bikes. That's the, that's the free window or if you pay a little more for your membership, up to an hour is free. So they're, they're not set up to really be half day or day rentals, which uh, most of the bike rental shops do. More than 800 cities around the world have bike share programs. The system in Paris called VLIB has over 23,000 bikes in their system, and there's over three quarter of a million bikes across various systems in China. Uh, once you register, you'll get an email with your user code, and then you just walk up to a bike, press in your user code, and off you ride. What areas will the system cover once the first phase is rolled out? Once we're uh, all rolled out, the service area includes the downtown peninsula bordered by Arbutus, 16th and Main Street. And are there any plans to expand beyond downtown Vancouver? There's no set time or, uh, for expansion yet, but we hope with a successful system that we will be able to expand in the future. You can learn more or sign up for Moby at mobybikes.ca. Thank you, Stephanie. People are definitely embracing the new bike sharing program. Stay tuned because after the break, we learn how to recycle your love. Also after the break, martial arts for little tykes. Community Connection will be right back. Do you have a show idea? Want to be on TV? Dream about creating local television content? Shaw is proud to support Access Programming and offers volunteer opportunities for in-studio and on-location productions. If you want to get involved, visit our website. See you on TV. Better Business Bureau has been helping our community for over 100 years, building an ethical marketplace where buyers and sellers trust each other, providing reliable information to help you, as a consumer, make smart buying decisions. BBB accredited businesses have been screened and are monitored for good business practices. These businesses help us provide you with BBB business reviews, customer reviews, dispute resolution, and fraud awareness. Start with trust. Find out more at BBB.org. Is it okay to say No. Would I be allowed to say No. How long does it take to get to third base? Long. Trust me. It's where you live. Shaw TV, your local voice. Welcome back to Community Connection. 
I'm on the seawall in West Vancouver where people are enjoying the beautiful scenery and taking in the fresh air. Next, we meet with two Jiu Jitsu instructors whose family oriented class is the perfect place not only to teach your kids how to feel safe, but to instill self confidence and self discipline. What do Buddhist monks, samurais, and the UFC have in common? Racy Bara Jiu Jitsu. Let's go check it out. Gracie Baja is actually it's a Jiu Jitsu organization that was started by Carlos Gracie Jr. He learned Jiu Jitsu from his, from his dad, Carlos Gracie. And it's an organization across the world with over 100 schools. And this is, uh, this is our main school in British Columbia. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu concentrates on the grappling aspects, on the submissions and self-defense. So instead of focusing 100% on striking, kicking, punching, it focuses on defending yourself against submissions and applying submissions in the, in the grappling aspect. So more grabbing, taking down, and groundwork, where karate doesn't include work from the ground, off the back. My responsibilities as a coach at Gracie Baja is to supervise the kids and the adult classes to teach positions and make sure that the positions are being performed correctly and safely on each other. We offer classes for uh, kids ages 3 to 13. We have a teens class, 13 to 18. We have an adults beginner class, adults fundamental class. We also offer classes for women's only and we offer kickboxing, boxing and fitness classes. I've been uh, coaching and instructing my kids from the sidelines. So naturally, I think they just push me on the mats. It is hard for women to try and grasp the concept of this is a male dominant sport, it is a male sport, and we're coming into it more like a newbie and we have to humble ourselves to it. We have the women's self-defense class, we have the women's BJJ class, that's very, very uh, upcoming. A lot of women are joining that, teen women's are joining it because it, it, has, it has a hold on the community today that women need self-defense. I like Jiu Jitsu because it's not necessarily punching or kicking, it's not a hostile thing, you're not attacking, it's more defending and it kind of humbles you. You, you almost know how to protect yourself so you don't really have to. It's an aura thing. For me, it's all about teaching the kids discipline, letting the kids know that they have to behave the same way in here as out there and to let them know that they're growing and what they're being shown or taught can carry on to their adult life. There is so many kids that come in here with low self-esteem, their head down, their shoulders shrunk in, and after not even a week of class, they're blooming, they're talking more, they're looking you in the eye when they speak. They're not afraid to, you know, open up. Here we have competition for kids of all levels, from three to 16. And how it goes is, when you're ready to compete, nobody's gonna push you into competing. When you're ready, then you're okay to compete. Then you talk to your professor or your coach, and you say, you know what, I'm ready to compete. Then you sign up, you go and you get coached by your teammates or your coach or your head professor. And it's, it's a great outcome because you have that self-confidence, that self-knowledge that someone is there with you you know, helping you succeed. We do the parenting kids night, so the parents can have their time off. And the kids come here, practice about 15 to 20 minutes of self-defense and party. Have popcorn, movies, games. And uh, we also have the kids and parents class on a Sunday. We invite the parents to put on a gi and have fun with their kids. Bow and shake hands. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. These tips are certainly great to know, helping your kids with their self-defense skills and boosting their self-confidence. And I'm here with Councillor Bill Saprovich of West Vancouver. We know that West Vancouver is very popular and many would love to live here. Could you please explain to our audience what makes this part of the city so special? 
Well, first of all, you and I are sitting on this beautiful waterfront, the best in the world as far as not being uh, full of buildings and not attainable by people. Uh, the community, for the most part, is still considered a bedroom community, although it's not mentioned these days. Uh, we have uh, incredible uh, services that we provide, like our own police force, our own transit system. Uh, and generally, we have uh, worked very hard to keep the and contain the wonderful neighborhoods in, in the different parts of the community. In West Vancouver, uh, we don't see any franchises and there are mainly local stores and boutiques. Do you think this is the way of West Vancouver promo promoting uh, local businesses? Well, we have, I think, four or five uh, distinct business areas. Certainly, Ambleside is one that has needed to be revitalized and we have plans. Uh, the local business community has started a BIA. Uh, they're in the throes of having their final, their annual uh, uh, report coming to us and I think through their efforts they'll go and, and bring about plans and advertising, bring in maybe tourism to West Vancouver uh, and, and all that goes with it. I, I think that certainly businesses have suffered. Uh, I think with the addition of, of the Grosvenor site down here uh, that that will spark a lot of interest to renew buildings. Uh, the ownerships, owners of buildings are going to have to step up and revitalize their, their uh, buildings and that hasn't taken place to date. As you are aware, the traffic has significantly increased in West Vancouver in the past few years and with more strata units being built, the, this issue is going to become even bigger. And with the main connection between downtown Vancouver and West Vancouver being the Lionsgate Bridge, are there any plans to address this issue? A couple of things that could take place. If the Squamish Nation were to develop their properties down on the river, or either side of the river, there, there could be a call for a four-lane bridge, which we've asked for several years back, uh, which would take a lot of traffic and pressure off Taylor Way. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that Park Royal said, if they were to receive some of their development processes, that they would uh, ask the provincial government, uh, and, and we as well through the engineering department, to change the lights uh, going south whenever there's a ferry or excessive amount of backup on Taylor Way up the hill. The second would be police presence at the intersection to stop uh, uh, lane jumpings to prevent traffic from moving slowly. I don't think uh, we're going to see uh, any major change in the way traffic is as far as doing something about it. We needed a master plan. I've asked for all to be involved, but nobody's taken the bite on it. Uh, it's upsetting to me. Uh, and it's something that we're going to have to specifically look at. Now, in the course of a given day, with all that moves through West Vancouver, the, the second highest industry right now is, is construction. So we have all the movement of goods and services, construction trucks along the Marine Drive corridor. Um, that will probably abate in time. Uh, certainly at three in the afternoon, at eight in the morning, you have all the moms driving kids to school. That's a, another high traffic time. So all in all, uh, when all said and done, you have increments of high traffic volume and then you have a time when there's nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's the dilemma. Thank you, Councillor. West Vancouver is truly an amazing place. After the break, an award-winning jewelry designer transforms the old into the new. Community Connection will be right back. Creating local TV that matters to your community. Shaw TV, your local voice. I'm thinking about getting a face tattoo. Uh, heels are flats. Heels, flats in your purse. Should I start smoking? No. Why are boys so weird? I wish I knew. I want a boyfriend. So do I. Hey guys, you wanna see something? All right, here. Sure. Uh... Whoa. Ooh, <laughs> nice, right? Man, is that your girlfriend? Yeah. Man, that's not cool. What, do you not have any respect for her? 
None of your business, man. Well, yeah, it's not really any of our business. Guys, we should delete this. You don't have to be a BC lion to be more than a bystander. Speak up and break the silence on violence against women. To help Eva BC, donate $10 by texting Speak Up to 20222. Welcome back to Community Connection. We've had a great time on today's show on the seawall in West Vancouver. Our last story is about an award-winning jewelry designer who transforms your old jewels into new customized pieces that you can wear and treasure for years to come. Many women, even a few guys, have a hidden stash of old gems and personal treasures they're holding on to. Perhaps they're mismatched or outdated uh, jewelry pieces that were handed down or gifted by loved ones or relatives. Well, what if you could take all that old jewelry and transform it into something new? A new piece of art, a new fashion statement, a new capsule for all those memories. I think it's an opportunity to visit uh, jewelry that is in a box somewhere or in a safety deposit box and bring it out and actually go through the stories of who gave it to you and the reasons or what part of your life and when in your life you received these pieces and, and revisit it and then celebrate those moments. And so can you describe the process? What is Recycle Your Love all about? Well, so I take my clients, we meet here at the Crystal Works Gallery, and we talk about all the pieces, individual pieces, how they receive them, um, uh, where they've been in their life with that person. So there are moments in time that you've been loved, and so we talk about those times, and we talk about the people that have been in their life. And I take all their stories in mind as I'm creating it. I think about all those stories and maybe they want a mantra or a word involved in the pieces and um, I'll hand carve the pieces and then they're cast and then they're brought back into my studio, set all the stones if there are stones and then we meet again and so it's a, one of my favorite times is really meeting my clients with the finished piece. So what can people expect from the overall experience? The emotional experience is really high. Um, a lot of the people that come to me are quite emotional when they're giving the pieces, especially if it's a memorial piece. And, um, and most of the time, I would say 90% of the time, it's quite emotional upon receiving the piece. Uh, people are really uh, connect to it. Um, they really feel that transformation. They feel a sense of accomplishment because it may have been a healing process. Uh, they feel really enriched because they're holding a lot of history of their life and they really feel uh, the journey of it and what the piece means to them. So it's, it's very powerful emotionally. People are really surprised at how much they have to actually look at themselves, their life, um, taking time to celebrate. I don't think we do that enough. And I think they're really surprised at how emotionally charged these pieces are and how much that really means to them. I never thought as a jewelry designer I would ever affect people with jewelry to that profound level and I feel I have found something that people really connect to. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you. So if you're interested in booking your own Recycle Your Love consultation, you can do that through her website, soniapicard.com. But be forewarned, everything on that website is very, very tempting, I know, because <laughs> I'm lured in every time I visit it. So go and explore her website and this whole process. It looks amazing. Well, that's a wrap for this edition of Community Connection on the seawall in West Vancouver. If you'd like to share a story, leave us a message on our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, and check out our YouTube channel for past shows. For Community Connection, I'm Azzy Kujuri. Thanks for watching.